Welcome back. Really pleased to say uh, I'm joined by a, a young and very talented rider who has just experienced a, an unusual bump in the road. Uh, the Mirror broke the story at the back end of, of last week. Uh, Harry Burns, jockey with Crohn's disease, hit with a ban for not declaring his new prescription. Uh, a clerical error, you might think, uh, for the BHA, uh, a serious matter, and it's landed Harry with a two-month suspension, which many of you have written to us saying seems incredibly harsh. Um, Harry, really good to see you. Uh, what's been a quite a challenging time for you, really, hasn't it? Yeah, um, last few weeks have been have been quite stressful, um, but I mean it's, it's it's all over and done with now. Um, and like I said, look, I I know I done wrong um, for 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 not declaring this this medication. Mm -hmm. The BHA have just followed protocol, um, and they've followed the guidelines. Um, but I do just feel that the penalty probably is a bit harsh. Um, Considering you know the whole ordeal happened uh, in March, so um, this so it was, is it, it was actually in March you found out that something had flagged up. Yeah, so you know this ban is. I'm not being banned for a substance. I'm being banned as punishment. Mm -hmm. So I just feel two months is, is 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 probably a bit harsh in my opinion. Yet, but you're being banned because you were taking some medicine that you hadn't disclosed to the BHA, yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, um, And would you have been able to ride on that medicine had you disclosed it? Is that what the ban's for, the non-disclosure? Yeah, um, I mean, I've, I've been riding on the medication since. Um, I had to do a concussion test. Luckily, my annual concussion test came in at the time when I had this um, urine test, so mm -hmm. um, luckily I didn't actually miss any days. Um, but I was meant to sort of have a concussion test when I started the medication in January, and mm -hmm. I didn't. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's, um, it is all, it all it is very confusing. Um, but hopefully, we can um, just try and move on now. And you know, the band's in place, so there's nothing anyone can do. So hopefully, we can just um, keep our heads down and, and keep working hard. I think the important thing, obviously, is if there are other people who have illnesses, conditions that need management, that they're aware of your case so that this sort of thing doesn't doesn't happen to them. Tell me a little bit about about Crohn's disease and your management of it and living with it and how, how difficult that is. Yeah, so Crohn's disease is a it's, it's an irritable, it's an inflammatory bowel disease. Um, it's where your immune system attacks itself mm -hmm. um, and then it can attack your gut as well. Um, so a lot of Crohn's medications weaken your immune system to stop your immune system fighting itself um, and it can cause flare-ups, abdominal pain, um, you know, loss of appetite, fatigue. Um, like at one point, I think, I remember when I got diagnosed, I sort of got down to about six stone, I think it was. Really? Uh, yeah. And so how old um, were you when you got diagnosed? So I got diagnosed um, it was actually a few weeks before my last year at school, and I missed the first two weeks of my last year at school. Um, and I remember going into my classroom because I was—I spent two weeks in the Royal London, because um, at the time that was a, that was mm -hmm. a local hospital in Whitechapel. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just remember—I remember going into the class, and uh, all my mates were there because I'd missed two weeks, and they sort of threw their hands in the air. But I remember I wasn't—I wasn't very healthy. Um, but I avoided surgery up until. Um, 2016. Yeah. Um, so the 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 intestine is made up of three layers. Mm -hmm. um, you've got an inner layer, a mid layer, and an outer layer. Um, and the inner layer is used for taking in nutrients. Um, and if inflammation at the time gets through the mid and outer layer, it can cause abscesses and um, fistulas and lots of other complications. Um, Unfortunately, it leaked through my intestine in 2016, um, and I had an abscess in my leg. Um, but it was right next to an artery, so it, it got a bit confusing, and I didn't actually, uh, to tell you the truth, I, th I thought I had a groin strain. So I left it for a week. Um, I was working at Dunlop's at the time, um, and I sort of went to the GP. I said, I'm really not feeling right here. Um, so they checked my heart rate, blah, blah, blah. She said, did you drive here? And I said, yeah. Um, and she said, oh, you're going to need to 
come get someone to get your car because I'm going to have to call you an ambulance. I think you've got sepsis. Oh my so, God. So, yeah. Um, so, with that, um, I said I didn't want an ambulance. I said I'll, I'll, I'll get my own way there. Luckily, Mrs. Dunlop actually drove me to A&E. Um, and then they put, they put a drain in my leg um, to try and drain this abscess. And it worked for a, a couple of weeks. It's quite a tricky procedure because it was right next to an artery. Um, but then, unfortunately, it came straight back once they took the drain out. And um, I think two days later, I ended up having an ileostomy bag. Yeah, um, which isn't what any 22-year-old wants no. when they're sort of meant to be enjoying life, going out, having fun. Um, and I was quite demoralised by that, to be, on to be honest. Yeah, it was, um, it was a long, hard process. But I got very supportive family. You know, my mum and dad were brilliant. Um, and yeah, luckily, it got a reversal. So it got reversed. I'd imagine at that time, the furthest thing from your mind was was being able to to pursue a career as a jockey. Yeah, it? yeah. That was for me. That was completely off the cards. Um, I did. I rode. I rode Dunlop's hack while I having this ileostomy bag. Because um, to be honest, it doesn't stop you doing anything. Mm. And if anything, it, it's probably the best I've ever felt with this. It's just there, you know. Um, and it does make you feel good. And I remember riding the hack at, at Dunlop's. Um, and it was fine, but right, race riding was definitely off the cards, yeah. Um, and then when I got it reversed, they actually removed 30 centimetres of my, of my bow as well. Mm -hmm. um, so then I, I, once I recovered out of that and came out of that, um, I thought I'd, I'd give it another crack, yeah. Um, but that was, in, that was in 2018, yeah. So obviously now riding with, with the after effects of that and with constant Crohn's, mm. you have to medicate. You have to kind of just keep yourself in the yeah. right uh, yeah. right weight, in yeah. the right health. How do you do that? Um, well, I, currently I am on medications. There is, There has been periods throughout the years where I've tried to go unmedicated, and it's worked for a time. Um, but the, 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 the scary thing about Crohn's is you can be as healthy as you like, and I could wake up tomorrow and I'll be having a flare-up. And I'll uh, relapse. Um, and will that will that completely knock you out of doing anything productive? Pretty much, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I usually struggle quite bad with loss of appetite, um, and I know when I've I've I'm a flare up's coming because I don't want to eat much. Um, the 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 extreme fatigue is the is the killer as well in this job. You've obviously, mm. you know, you've got a lightweight. You've got a couple of pounds to lose. I stay away from caffeine as much as I can because that and caffeine in my stomach doesn't go well. Um, so like a lot of the lads are like, you know, rely on Red Bull and, and, and coffee. I can only have one coffee a day, otherwise that will, that's me for the day. Um, so I've been wasting for a day and I've not been eating. Um, you know, I can't have caffeine. So I've really got a, a plus I've got fatigue, so it, it can be a struggle sometimes. Um, but I'm, I'm just getting on with it, yeah. So why? did you resolve to really want to do this, to, to ride? Because there's a lot more stress-free things you could have done for your body and for your mind, surely. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's something I love. Um, um, and I've, you know, I've, I left school at 16 and went straight into racing, having, having not sat on a racehorse. Um, and I sort of clicked with it straight away. Um, and I've, I've, I've been around as well. I worked in Hong Kong for a period. Um, How was that? Brilliant, loved it, yeah. I only came back because of COVID. Um, so if, if COVID-19 if COVID didn't break out, I, I may have still been out there just riding track work. But um, I came back and, and Joseph Parr, who's a good friend of mine, um, he rang me and said, said, what are you doing? And I just said, I'm, I'm just quarantining because I'm back from Hong Kong. And he says, oh, he bought a couple of, he bought a couple of breeze ups at the time, um, horses and said, do you mind, do you mind popping in and, and, and riding a couple of them out? I says, yeah. And, my weight, some, my weight was actually really good at the time, um, and he was. He said, Joe says uh, a few weeks later, he says, why don't you get, why don't you get license back out? So, um, I thought, I thought we'd go for it, yeah. So I, I spent the first season back, 2021, with Joe, um, Joseph, um, and I rode 15 winners, and he, he supported me massively. Um, and then I, I thought, if I want to progress, I, I probably need to try and start getting on a sort of bit better caliber horse. Um, so I, I spoke with Joe and, and I rode a winner for the Crisfords in the, that winter. Um, so I gave them a phone call. I said, "Would you be interested in, in, in sort of having me in?" Um, 
and being and, and being your sort of stable stable claimer if you like. Um, and they they were keen for it and have sort of never looked back since. Yeah, I've ridden some really nice horses for for the Chriswoods. And what sort of environment is it there? That's brilliant. Yeah, is it? It's good fun. Got a great team. Yep, yeah, Simon and Ed. Uh, How do they work together? How, what's the yin and yang like? It's actually very good. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, I mean I've never I've never seen them argue. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it is, it, is, it is very good and it is very much a joint team effort. No one's sort of, no one's higher, no one's lower. Um, and they've got brilliant work riders, good head lads. Um, Travelling staff are brilliant. Um, yeah, it is, it is a real good atmosphere. It is good. So you've now got two months on the sidelines. Yeah. What are you going to do? Um, well, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm definitely going on holiday. I'm going to take my girlfriend on holiday because she's put up with it just as much as me. Um, have you been difficult to live with the last few months? Um, I see. I'm. I'm not. I'm not one. I don't take my sort of stress out on other people. I just sort of lock it up. Because again, with Crohn's, stress can be really, really um, bad for Crohn's. Hence why, like when I, when the process with the BHA come out, that's why I asked for it to sort of stay private because I don't need the stress. Um, and sort of going back to when I first started race riding. Um, adrenaline is a it's a stress hormone. Mm -hmm. So when I was going out, my first few rides, the adrenaline was obviously pumping, um, and a few days later, I just feel a bit rough. And I'm like, why, why am I feeling rough? You know, I'm I'm riding, I'm getting rides, I'm starting off, um, and it's not till now, you know, sort of the last two years, where I'm a bit older, I'm a bit more mature. Race riding's a lot. I'm, I deal with the race, pressures of race riding very well now, um, and I've got very supportive people around me. So you don't have these huge adrenaline spikes, which means you don't have the crashes quite as bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and I just sort of just try, just try and keep composed, um, keep keep focused, um, and try not to let the adrenaline sort of get the better of us. Because well, adrenaline is a good thing, but at the end of the day, it is a stress hormone, and if you if I have too much stress, I could relapse. So I've just got to try and stay as calm as I can. And when it comes to, you know, I've, I've ridden horses, I've lost rides on them, and I, that's absolutely fine by me now. I fully accept it, you know. You can see why lads get, get angry or, you know, or, you know, oh, I've done nothing wrong on that, and then so-and-so's riding it. And now I just, um, I just, just take it on the chin. Got a, you know, and I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. I'm just happy to be riding in the first place. And 55 winners from around 500 rides is, is no mean achievement at this stage of your career. I mean, Richard, there's some... Pretty key life lessons for all of us here, I think, but also some some significant inspiration for people who think, well, I can't be a professional sportsman because I've got this or that. Absolutely, and I think, forget the, the ins and outs of the BHA just for a moment, we might come back to it, but it, the point is that you don't realise some of the challenges that people face on a day-to-day -day basis, and in this, it is pretty significant, just checking to Harry beforehand to try and understand a little bit more about it. Um, I do know a couple of people who also suffer, but they, mm. they, be honest, if they were honest, they would suffer for day-to-day -day existence going to work, let alone, if you like, inducing some of those factors that make it yeah. harder for you to cope with. That creates a massive extra barrier. I think I'm right in saying Jack Leach suffers from Crohn's disease. The I England think, yeah. mm. And I, th I remember seeing a documentary about how he was battling... Um, more the psychological aspects, I think, and that's the point. Mm -hmm. Is it's not just a physical illness as regards that, although some of what you're talking about yeah. is very physical. It must be the way that you're only 24 hours away from being back in that situation, which you can't control. No, yeah, absolutely. Um, and 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 that's the thing. It can it can affect your mental health. Um, I know people with the Crohn's that they don't like leaving the house out of fear that you know or. Like for me, for instance, if I'm going somewhere, I won't, I won't have a big breakfast. I won't. That's hence why I allow for caffeine and, and whatnot, just to try and keep everything go as smooth as possible. But there is people that, are, you know, anxiety is quite a big thing with Crohn's as well, and um, yeah, it, it, it can be, it can be a struggle. But you know, there is a lot of help and support out there, so it is, um, you know, it's, it's manageable at the minute. Yeah. And are you able now? to, when you come back riding, use the same medication that you've been banned for, effectively, as long as the BHA know what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's a simple, basically you've made a clerical error, Yeah. and you've got a two-month ban, and that's the entry point for the ban. Yeah, you know. And, and, that's, and that, I mean, 
that's the, that's the point. There's the about what you'd like to gain out of this, and I think that was the, you know, it's a, it is the entry point. They have no, given no, they no have given the appeal. minimum, and there yeah. are legitimate reasons why this rule as a whole would be in place, aren't there? In terms yeah. of Safety. you know, yes, yeah. of course. In terms of any any medication you ride under needs to be disclosed. But I think in your case, the mitigating circumstances, as we've heard, is so great that maybe a wider uh, span of um, penalty would be more appropriate if it's clearly at the lower end of the scale and perhaps mm. if you can learn anything from that. And I suppose as well that we've spread this so many times, but this was March? Uh, yeah. So yeah. you've had that length of time in circumstances where anxiety is a contributory factor to inflammation. So I suppose that would be the other more timely um, mm. dealing with yeah. it would have probably been yeah. better. So yeah. there's definitely, I think there's definitely a couple of lessons to be learned from for, for the BHA. Have you, you, have you felt that there's been a deal of sympathy towards you, notwithstanding all of that, or not? Um, I mean, from the, from the public and every, everyone on social media have been, have been brilliant. Um, but I mean, t for me, the BHA have just sort of looked at the rules. I mean, have they taken into account certain things? I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure. Um, but like I say, I can't really argue because they have given me entry point. It's the minimum they could have given me. Mm. Um, but is the, you know, have, has anyone put their arm around you and said, look, I'm really sorry this has happened, let's help you manage this situation? Um, yeah, you know, I've, I've had a lot of support um, from, from a lot of people. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, is I've, I've taken it on the chin now. I've now accepted it, so I'm, I'm a lot better now. Um, mm. I've, got a, I've got a plan in place for what I'm going to do for the next two months. Um, I'm going to keep riding out at the Christmas most days. Um, going to try and get away on, on, on a little holiday. Um, and what about a plan beyond that? And what about ambitions beyond that? I mean, I'm, I've, I've, so I've, I've got a new agent, um, James, um, and that's, this is the other uh, frustrating thing. I was actually really starting to get rolling, um, riding nearly every day. I'm, I think I rode for a, a lot of few new contacts. Um, and then this sort of happened, so it sort of put a bit of a dent in it. Um, but James has been brilliant. Um, you know, he's he's fully aware of, of the situation I've got, and he works well. I speak to him, I speak to him every day. Um, and you know, I sort of I sort of say to him, sort of, you're the boss, because, mm. you know, like if I'm not riding something, fair enough. So um, I'll never ring up and say, why am I not riding that? Why am I not riding this? Because you know, I've got the utmost faith that he's doing his job. Um, so, and, and working with James is, you know, also pretty crucial for the stress side of things. I don't need to ring him up and say, why am I not running that? And then, because um, I know that he, he's on the ball. So, um, we're going to give this winter a good kick and yeah. really, really try, try and um, not touch up the winners over the, uh, over the winter. Well, I hope in a weird roundabout and unnecessarily stressful way this provides the springboard that you need harry thanks so much for sharing your story and joining us this morning thank you i appreciate it not Cheers. at all subscribe to racing tv's youtube channel now to watch more great races like this